We're going to look at a biblical phrase that's found 22 times in the Bible today. It's a little interesting little study. We're going to look at the phrase, surely die. Surely die. 22 times in the Bible. And we'll take the first place, Genesis 2.17, which should be familiar to the person that reads his Bible. And to that, to maybe a new Christian, understanding that. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. There is the very first commandment that God has given to man. It's not. Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, honor thy mother. The very first commandment is the tree of the knowledge of, of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. And the consequences of that, the Ten Commandments don't get, you know, thou shalt not commit adultery. And then, well, you, you'll die. Thou shalt not steal. Well, you're going to have to pay back. But with the commandment here, it says, you know, if you do eat of that fruit, Thou shalt surely die. Now, I know people say, well, Adam, you know, he ate the fruit and he didn't die. Yes, he did. He didn't die that day, but he died, Genesis chapter 5. And don't worry, it doesn't say thou shalt surely die, at, you know, three moments, <laughs> two, two seconds. And people want to read into the Bible more than it is. Genesis 3, 4. Now, this is the serpent, according to Revelation chapter 12. This is the devil, the Satan. And he's speaking to the woman. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Well, look at what we have here about surely die. The devil comes out and speaks to the woman and said, God's a liar. Chapter 2, God says, surely die. The devil shows up in chapter 3 and says, no, you won't. Now, the devil knew what God said. Now, we don't know because God spoke to Adam. And between Genesis 2.17 and Genesis 3.4, we don't know if God told Eve or Adam told Eve or he did. Eve knew something. When you look at verse 2 and 3, and then we're not going to look at it for the sake of time, but she knew something. And the devil knew what God said, probably for the fact is that she says in verse 3, leech ye die. So Eve had already questioned, surely die, least ye die. And the devil says, thou shalt not surely die. Taking what Eve had, had corrected the word of God and, you know, removing the surely. And the devil says, all right. Eve took out the word surely and said, least. And the devil was so good to put surely die back in there. But he added, not. God said, thou shalt surely die. The devil said, shall not surely die. That's what Eve wanted to hear. Genesis 20, verse 7. On your frame of the scriptures, the devil will give you what you want to hear. That's why there's so many religions. You want a God that will compromise? The devil will give you a God that will compromise. You want, a, you want a God that will go by your works? The devil will give you that God. You want the scripture to say what you want it to say? And the devil will give you a Bible that will have it to say what you will have it to say. And yet, what God said. What did God say? All right, Genesis 20, verse 7. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife. This is Abraham. He's in Gerar. And Abimelech has taken Sarah innocently. Abraham said, she's my sister. You lied. Now, therefore, restore the man. God speaking to him. Restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. And he shall pray for thee. And thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not. Conditional, free will. 
Know that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Again, I mean, we know Abimelech, he turned Sarah over to Abraham, so we don't see the death. But like, like Adam, God told him, thou shalt surely die. And if he did not turn Sarah over, which he, he does, well, you know, he didn't kill him. Watch. Look at verse 18. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. God would not have killed Abimelech that day. But it says his people in him. God would have killed the group, the nation, the governing body of Abimelech. How? They would have no children. They would have no hairs. And they will die out. It'd be like a man. Let's take a man. He's got the name Smith. Mr. and Mrs. Smith has two daughters. Those two daughters marry men and they marry Jones and whatever name, common. When those daughters move on and Mr. Smith dies, his name died because his daughters had taken their husband's names. If he had a son to carry a name on, then it would be living still. But God, with Abimelech and all his people, God closed up all the wombs of the of the women, and there would have been no more babies. No more Abimelechs and his people. That would have been a sure death of a nation. A sure death of a group of people. And it wouldn't happen overnight. Numbers 26. Numbers 26. And when you talk to a lot of people, and they say, well, you know, Abr I mean, Abraham, Adam survived in chapter 4. But he died in chapter 5. A ripe old age, he died. Numbers 26, 65. You know, as quick as men are to pass judgment of God upon other people, but we want God's mercy ourselves. God, go get him, go get him, go get him. Why did you get him, Lord? Because God's long-suffering. And we want the patience and long-suffering of God when it comes to things in our life. Numbers 26, 65. Numbers 26, 65. And the Lord said of them, Thou shalt surely die in the wilderness. There was not left a man of them, save Caleb the son of Jethana, and Joshua the son of Nun. Okay. Here is a group of Israelites. The spies have gone into the promised land. They brought back. I mean, imagine the size of those grapes. It took two men on a staff to bring those grapes. Ooh, wait. I'd be happy. We have to get a second refrigerator just for the grapes. And they say, you know what? Yeah, it's a great land. It's a wonderful land, man. But there, there's giants in there. We can't get it. We can't do it. Let's, let's, let's make an army and go back to Egypt. And God said, of every one of those men, except for Caleb and except for Joshua, you're going to surely die but those two men. And again, it was an instant. But they died. And Joshua and Caleb went into the promised land and they got a possession of their own in the promised land. And when I when I preach on the streets and it says in the Bible, someone said, the wages of sin is death. Well, I'm not dead. You're going. That's why a lot of times when I preach on the street, I say, listen, death is coming. I don't know when, but God does. And when a, when a doctor comes in and says, listen, your condition is terminal. You're going to die. That doesn't mean you're going to die at night. It may. A lot of times it don't. In the late 1990s, I don't know what year it is. I, I forgot. I was diagnosed from smoking. And the thing went right out of my head. Um, emphysema. And the lung doctor told my wife and I, at that point, I had anywhere between three to six months to live. I was going to die. This is 2020. That was in the late 1990s. I still got emphysema. 
Now I didn't go. I did not go by the grace of God by his time frame. But, but I'm going to die, and it may be still because of emphysema. It's still in my lungs. Surely died is not all right. Right now you're dead. Long suffering, the mercy of God. You know why Jesus Christ hasn't come back with his church yet? We do know. Surely the rapture is going to happen, right? But why hasn't it happened yet? All right, let's say the rapture happened. Let's let's, let's give us let's give seven days before I got saved. Let's say the rapture happened before April 14th, 1987. I would have gone through the tribulation period. I would die and go into hell. Listen, I can't even survive being sinless as a Christian. I sin. Never mind going through the tribulation period with the law. The law comes back in the tribulation period. I've read the law. I can't keep the law. And I am sure probably wouldn't go... Into the ways of the Antichrist. But if the rapture happened April 14th, 1987, I would have missed out. I thank God for God's long suffering mercy. Because seven days later, April 21st, 1987, I got saved. Well, how come the rapture hasn't happened right now? God's long suffering because he knows if someone's going to get saved and going to get right and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe the rapture is going to happen when God knows there'll be no one else in the church. Eh? No one will ever get saved. And then that's where the rapture is going to happen. Some people believe, I believe kind of fact, that once that last Christian gets down and receives Jesus Christ as Savior, we're going to go up. Surely the rapture is coming. But it hasn't come. Even Paul was looking for the rapture. So I guess God's a liar. No, surely die. Adam, thou shalt surely die. He ate the fruit. He didn't die right away. Surely the rapture's coming. Well, the rapture has to give. Don't give up. <laughs> Don't give up. These spies lived out, but they died. Judges 13, 22. Judges 13, 22. Some of these are going to just going to just fly over real quick, and others will stop and look at. But thirteen twenty-two judges. Look at this one. This is Samson's mo uh, father and mother together, and Manoah, Samson's father, said unto his wife, after seeing the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ, "We shall surely die because we have seen God." <laughs> and he doesn't die because he shows up in chapter fourteen. Verse 5, he went, Samson went down. He, Samson's got to be grown up because he's after a woman. And father and mother came to Timothy and he's going to meet this man. Manoah was wrong. Now he's not God. He says, listen, we've seen God. We've seen God work and we're going to die. Well, he would die eventually, but not because of what the Lord done. So we got to come to the fact is when God says it, glory to God, it's going to happen. Be assured. When the devil says it, he may be telling you what God said. No, it ain't going to happen. Don't believe what God says. God's a liar. When the Bible says he's the liar, the devil. And you may hear a man say, I shall surely die. Like I told you, in the late 1990s, a doctor told me I was going to die of emphysema. I don't know how many years it's been, but this is 2020. When God says it, it's going to happen. When the devil says it, he's questioning or calling God a liar. When man says it, well, it may not be so. 1 Samuel 14, 39. A man who's a type of the Antichrist. <laughs> King Saul chases David. And what happened is they won a battle. King Saul said, no one is to eat any food. He just fought a battle. Eat. And Jonathan, Saul's son, takes his rod. He sees some honey. Takes the end of his rod and gets some honey. And mm, that's good. Woo. I feel good. Look at me. I'm alive. I ate. 
1439. And as the Lord liveth, which saveth Israel, he did, though it be Jonathan my son, for surely, for surely die, he shall surely die. But there was not a man among the people that answered him. 44. And so answered God do so more also, for that thou shalt surely die, Jonathan. You know, there's going to be a death warrant put out in the tribulation period. The Antichrist's number one public enemy will be the Jews. And other people don't receive the mark. But public number enemy number one, wanted dead or alive, will be the Jews. And the Bible says that there are saints that are going to be in the tribulation period. They're going to be under the throne of God with their, who have been beheaded for the word and the testimony. But we know the Antichrist is the devil. We know he's going to kill Jews and probably much more than what Adolf Hitler done and any other points of history. But God will have a remnant that will escape the Antichrist. Jonathan does right. And the words of Saul come to no avail. You know what the devil wants to do? He wants to kill us. You know how do you know? Job 1 and 2. God had to say, okay, devil, do it. But you can't do this. All right. Touch him with, 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 with infirmity of, of pain and suffering. But you can't kill him. And you know what? The government, King Saul, may tell you, thou shalt surely die. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs. In some cases, you may not. The 11 disciples of the Lord, well, except for John, but John suffered, but the, the 10 disciples of the Lord died violent, violent deaths in the hands of government and the people. The government may put forth to you, you're going to surely die for doing right. Jonathan did right. Food was, was what needed for the troops. And Jonathan said, hey, my eyes are lighted. But, you know, eating food is wrong. Preaching the Bible is wrong. Can't talk about that. It's wrong. Can't mention God. It's wrong. You can't mention Jesus, the book of Acts. It's wrong. Sometimes God protects us. 1 Samuel 20. 1 Samuel 20, 31. we got to realize what God says is true. What man says may not be so true. 1 Samuel 20, 31. For as long as the son of Jesse, David, liveth on the ground, thou shalt not be established, nor thy kingdom, talking to the Jonathan, Wherefore, now send and fetch him unto me, David, and he shall surely die. It don't happen. You know, they wanted Jesus Christ dead, didn't they? Did they kill him? Yes, they did. Did he stay dead long? No, he didn't. Up from the grave he arose three days. David is a type of a type of Jesus Christ. The throne of Jesus will, is David's throne. There may be people out there whose main ambition of life is to kill you. I am assured that we've been six or seven years at the farmer's market here in Daytona Beach. I am assured that there are people there who want me dead. And who knows? Maybe I will. Maybe I will die in the hands of those people that are there. Right now, God said, nope. I am surely going to die. The wages of sin is death unless the rapture happens. How about that? I may not surely die. If the rapture happens, I'm not going to die. Those that are alive and remain shall be caught together with those that have died and are asleep. 
There's a point in time in the church age that surely die will not go for Christians. You'll upset the devil. And there may be people out there who have that death threat. Uh, listen, other nations right now, in Muslim nations, in, in nations like China and Russia, there are Christians there that if they can get you, they can catch you. They got a sign of you're going to surely die. I got a friend in China right now, and I'm not going to mention no name or anything, but he has fallen off the planet of Earth. And it's probably feared that if he's living, he's in he's in he's in a jail somewhere, suffering, or maybe dead. Been many years since I heard. But all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That persecution, man, if I can get my hands on him, you're surely dead. You surely did. First Samuel twenty two. So twenty two sixteen. Twenty two sixteen. King Saul again. And yeah, the devil has a death threat. The, the devil wants to get the people of Israel. The people want to get the Jew. Here's here's and the king said. Thou shalt surely die, Ahimelech. He's the king. He, I mean, he's the priest. Thou and all thy father's house. Why? Because he helped David. He gave David counsel. He gave David uh, the Goliath sword. He helped David. Gave David and his men some the holy bread that he wasn't supposed to eat. That Jesus says that's what happened. And he gets a friend here with a Doeg, Dodo, whatever his name is. What's his name? Uh, Doeg. And Doe goes and kills. Here's a threat by King Saul now. He says, Thou shalt surely die, and it happens. There are going to be Jews in the tribulation period that will die. We see it in the book of Revelation. John says he saw the, the, the souls of them that have been beheaded. I don't want to say rest assured, but rest assured, there will be Jewish people who will die in the tribulation period because of the Antichrist. King Saul is the type of Antichrist. They're the priests. They help David. There'll be people in the tribulation period that will help the Jews. And they will be tortured and they will be dead because of what they do to help the Jews. Sometimes when the devil says, surely die, it will happen. And at that point, it happened almost instantly. As much as the time that would allow Doeg to kill the family, that's how long, that's how quick it happened. It didn't happen instantly. I would assume that right then and there, Himmelech died immediately. Doeg would have to go and go kill the house. 2 Samuel 12, 5. Here's David. 2 Samuel 12, 5. David, type of Jesus Christ. He just committed two wicked sins. But all sins are wicked. But adultery and murder. Chapter 12, verse 5. Nathan comes up to David. And he tells him a little uh, parable here. And the reaction of David, 12, 5. David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that has done this thing shall surely die. And Nathan says, thou art the man. Did David die? No, he didn't. He lived to a ripe old age. He got so old that they had to get a woman just to keep him warm, which I could never understand because he had all those wives. One time, you know, he's got this woman to keep him warm. Bathsheba walks in like, well, she was one of his wives, but that's a whole different story. David said, the king said, "Thou shalt, that man shall surely die. And the man was him. David is a type of Jesus Christ, but David's not God. David was wrong. Now let's look at God. Chapter 12, verse 14. God speaking through Nathan. How be it because of this deed that has given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. That's God speaking through Nathan. 
Verse 18. And it came to pass on the seventh day the child died. It did not happen. In, there were probably people saying, Oh, Nathan said that God said the child shall die. Uh, my watch said he hasn't died. It took seven days. It took seven days. But that child died. But David was relying solely on the mercy and grace of God. But look at verse... Uh, where is it? Verse 16. David therefore besought the God for the child. God said, surely die. And David fasted and went in and laid up all night upon the earth. God said, surely die. David saw the mercy and grace of God that the long suffering of God. The wages of sin is death, but you don't die right away. First Kings two thirty seven. First Kings two thirty seven. King Solomon type of Jesus Christ talking to Shimei who had cursed David his father. And the king sent and called Shimei and sent him build thee a house in Jerusalem and dwell there and go not forth thence any whither. For it shall be in the day that thou goest out and passest over the brook room, there's a borderline, thou shalt know for certain that thou shalt surely die. There it is. King Solomon says, listen, you, you I want you in my eyesight. And the moment you are out of my eyesight, you're going to die. So Shimei takes off. And he goes after a runaway slave. Verse 42, and the king, King Solomon sent and called for Shimei. After he heard that Shimei took off, he said, did I not make thee yeah, swear by the Lord? And protested unto thee, saying, No of a surety on the day that goes out and walketh abroad, whether thou shalt surely die. Now he says on the day, did Shimei die the day that he took off? No, he went out, got his slave and came back. Verse 46, so the king commanded Benaniah, the son of Jehoiada, which went out and fell upon him, Shimei, and he died. I, a week, maybe? I don't know. But there it is. There's the orders by the government because Shimei had gone against the law of the king. The wages of sin is death, Shimei. And it took, took seven, I'm going to say a week. I don't know how long it was. I would be in great error if I said it was a week, but I'm 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 going to name it. However, it took him to go ahead and get his slave and come back. The wages of sin. What's the sin, Shimei? You disobeyed the king. What was the result? You died. Adam, don't eat of this fruit. You shall surely die. He ate of fruit, and I forget how long he lived. Over a hundred years, he died. And when you preach to someone, you tell them, listen, the wages of sin is death. And that guy lives 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, maybe 90, maybe 100 years. Uh -huh, I didn't die. Then boom, you die. You disobeyed the word of God. And then you died. But again, I'm going to mention the Christian. Christian sin. The preacher gets up, preaches about our sin. Huh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. The rapture. But I didn't die. I know, but you're going to have some lost rewards. But if the, if the Lord tarries, you will die. Surely die. The wages of sin is death. That was written. To, you know why it doesn't say the wages of death is surely death? No, the wages of sin is surely death. You know why I don't say that? Because Romans 6.23 is written to Christians. Because there's a time that some Christians will not face death. How's that? 
So, 2 Kings 1 4. 2 Kings 1 4. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord, thou shalt not come down from the bed on which thou art going up, but shalt surely die, and Elijah departed. Here's a man, he's a ruler, he's a king, and he went to Baal Elizabeth. He went to Baal, the God of Akron. And God says, because you did that, you're going to surely die. You didn't seek me. You know what? One of the surely things of God may cause your death, you won't listen to God. You get that man, you hear that man, he's preaching about the gospel of Jesus Christ, you will reject that gospel. God say, okay, fine, you're going to die. I'm glad that preacher said, you don't know when you're going to die. But you're going to die. And he gets a mess in verse 6. Elijah stops his men. He says, listen, you go tell that king he's going to surely die. They tell him. Verse 16. Elijah steps in. He said to him, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast sent messengers to choir of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron, that's the Lord of the flies, it is because there is no God in Israel to choir of his word. You can't go to God of Israel. Therefore thou shalt not come down off the bed. You ain't come down that hospital bed and that which is going up, but shall surely die. The Bible says, So he died according to the word of the Lord. There it is. He died. When God says, surely die, you're going to die. 2 Kings 8.10 2 Kings 8.10 2 Kings 8.10 Elijah again. He's Hazel is reigning over Syria, and he's become sick, and he wants to know of God, of Elijah, am I going to get well? And Elijah said to verse 10, thou mayest certainly recover. You're going to get rid of this disease. You're going to be healed. Howbeit the Lord show me that thou shalt surely die. And come to find out that his, what's the name of this man there? Oh, where's his name? It's in here somewhere. Oh, its name is in here, so I just can't. Talk about Ben Haydad and Hazel. I believe it's Hazel. Yeah, Hazel said, Hazel comes to Elisha about Ben Hadad. And Elisha says, he's going to, that disease he's had, he's going to be healed. But he's going to surely die. And Hazel, you're going to cry, you're going to kill him. So we read, verse 14. So he departed from Elisha and came to his master. Hazel came to Ben Hadad, who said unto him, What, what said Elisha to thee? And he answered, he told me that thou shouldst surely recover. That's only one quarter of the message. He didn't tell me you should surely die. And he didn't tell him that Hazel was going to rule over the government. And it came to pass on the morrow, on the morrow, after the guy came to the king, after the morrow, he took a thick cloth and dipped it in water and spread it over his face that he died. And Hazel reigned. All right, he's got a disease warrant. The disease will heal, but he's going to be murdered. That's what God said. Now surely die. Another king's going to take over. Jeremiah 26, 8. Jeremiah 26, 8. This is an interesting one. 26 8. Now it came to pass when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking all that the Lord had commanded, what God said, to speak unto all the people, that the priests and the prophets of all the people took him, saying, Thou shalt surely die. 
The man faithfully preaches the word of God, and the result of the preaching of the word of God, the people listening said, Thou shalt surely die. We don't want to hear it. Have I become a, have I become your enemy? Because I have spoken the truth. Something like that, what Paul said to the church. Again, that's the devil reaching out. I don't want to hear the word of God. As a result of you preaching the word of God, Jeremiah, thou shalt die. Again, men said that. Jeremiah lives to a ripe old age. Ezekiel 3.18. Ezekiel 3.18. When I, God, say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die. Now giveth him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die and his iniquity, but his blood will I require at his hand. The way this is in his death, Ezekiel, you better tell him. This is what God expects from you. This is what you're supposed to tell them how I want them to live. Christian, the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Tell them they're going to die. They don't want to hear that, but you're going to die. I've got my life insurance to cover that. They ain't going to cover your death. And you won't get that money. Your relatives will get that money. You get out there and tell the lost and dying world, you're going to die. And the rich man died and was buried and lifted up his eyes in hell. The Christian, absent from the body and present with the Lord. You get out there and tell those lost people, you're going to surely die. I don't know when, but you'll surely die. Tell them. Ezekiel 18.13. Ezekiel 18, 13. But that went off good with, with the nation of Israel. 18, 13. Ezekiel 18, 13. Has given forth upon usury and has taken incense. Shall he live? Shall he not live? He that does these abomination. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. Ezekiel is quoting Romans that have never been written yet. The wages of sin is death. You're going to continue in your sins. You're going to die in your sins. You're going to die. You're going to surely die. If your loss and a rapture happens, you're going to surely die. You know what happens to a lost man? He shall surely die. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 105, 110, 111 years. That's old. And if you don't do what God says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved in thy house, thou shalt surely die. I don't know when, but you're surely going to die. Come to Christ and live. And when you're in Christ, yeah, your body dies, but you're absent from the body and present with the Lord. And hey, if you're a Christian and the rapture happens, all those that are alive and remain shall be caught together with those that are asleep. You have the great chances, especially now in this time, of not going to die. The wages of sin written to a Christian is death. It doesn't say the wages of sin is surely death, because some Christians won't face death. How's that? Glory to God. All right, that was what? That was chapter 18. Ezekiel 33, 8. Ezekiel 33, 8. I thought this was an interesting study. I hope you do. Get these out, tell your friends, pass them out. Ezekiel 33.8. These are not copyrighted. And if you mess with it, if you cut and splice, that's between you and God. God knows what I said. I make enough mistakes on my own without you having to add to it. When I say God says to the wicked, O oh, wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked of his way, 
You're a sinner. Turn or burn. Repent. Only Jesus says that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. The wages of sin is death. But his blood shall will I, God, require it thy hand. Man, listen, how many people do you, do you work with? How many people do you live with? How many people are in your family? How many people do you know that you have not witnessed Jesus Christ? They die in their sins. You will be held accountable. They're not going to want to hear surely die. They know they're going to die. Why do they have life insurance? They just don't know what's going to happen after they die. Everybody's got this fancy, oh, nothing happens. Or I hope to go to heaven. Or my church will get in heaven. Or my family will burn candles for me. Let me tell you, if your family burned candles for you, maybe your family don't like you. What if you think the family that hates you, they're not going to burn candles for you. They ain't going to do nothing. You think your priest... Your priest may be having fornication, adultery relations with little altar boys. You think he's going to get you into heaven? I doubt it. You better put your hope and trust in the, nothing but the blood of Jesus. You need to get out of religion. And if you don't, thou shalt surely die. Take this video and give it to your friends. I can't speak up. Say, well, here, I got this video I want you to watch. It's about death. Give it out to them. Hey, if you give this video out to a lost man, say, I want you to watch this video. You, you've done your part. You'll get fruit with me if, if anything happens. There's nothing wrong with giving lost people videos when it comes to true salvation of Jesus Christ about the blood. Last place. If I say, whew, last place. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. 3314. Again. <laughs> when I, God says unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right. I'm not going to read it because that gets into works of the Old Testament. But if he repents and he gets right and he gets saved, his body may die, but he'd be absent with the body, present with the Lord. Or if the rapture happens while he's still living, he won't surely die. He'll go up in the rapture. Let's look at that. One more place. I lied. You got one more place. But this is not surely die. So I was done with surely die, but here we go. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant without knowledge. I want you to know, brethren, saved people, concerning which are asleep who have died, that ye sorrow not as others have no hope. Listen. When they cry, the lost people, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know the church, I don't know this religion, I don't know where, I don't know where he is, I'll just put rest in peace and lie, I don't know. I don't know. None of my Christian friends will tell me about Jesus, I don't know. But when you bury two wives who are saved and you know they're in heaven, you got the satisfaction they're in heaven, you know they're waiting for you. They know that, hey, listen, when I'm in the mountain of public ministry, someone gets saved because, because they, uh, God used me to get saved. And they hear the angels rejoice in heaven that lost man has come home. They say, hey, that was my husband that did it. I know where my saved family are. They're in glory. I envy them. They're with Jesus, no more suffering. I'm here on this earth suffering. For if we believe that Jesus died, I do, and rose again, I do, even so them also that sleep died, in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, you can put them six feet under dirt. You can put them in a concrete encasement. And you can put them in a sealed vacuum tight coffin. You can mummify them, wrap them in bandages. They ain't going to stop them. You can put them on the bottom of the ocean floor. You can have somebody put you in concrete at the bottom of the ocean. I ain't going to stop you. You're saved. You're going up. You're going up. 
For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of an archangel, with the trump, that's not Donald, trump, not trumpet, with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. There you go. There's the dead going. That's the rapture. It's going up. They have surely died. Those have surely died. Then we which are alive. See, you know what Paul said? We. Paul was expecting the rapture. We. We. He didn't say you. He didn't say ye. He said we. Paul was expecting the rapture. We which are alive have not died and remain, we haven't died, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Those have not surely died as those who have surely died. So the wages of sin written in Christian the wages of sin is death. It doesn't say surely death because there's some Christians are going to sin and one day they're not going to die. And they'll die no longer. And they'll die for never. How about Enoch? He never died. Enoch never died. He was raptured. What about, uh, I was going to say Elijah. What about Elijah? <laughs> Give a new name to him. Elijah. You know what? He never died. He didn't surely die. Did he? He was raptured. That the 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 the, the fire chariot and the horses and all that. But he's coming back in the tribulation and they're going to kill him. So he's surely gonna die. <laughs> Moses surely died. We don't know where his body is. They would make a shrine. The Catholics would have a shrine if they knew where Moses was. But you know what? Moses is coming back to surely die again. Enoch never died. He will never face surely death. Elijah surely... Wait a minute. Elijah... No, won't face... Uh, wait a minute. Elijah was raptured. And he's surely going to die in the tribulation period. Moses surely died on the mountain. He got to see the land. We didn't get to go in it. He's coming back in the tribulation period to surely die again. A Christian who has died has surely died. And Christians will surely die unless the rapture happens. And if you are alive when the rapture happens, you're not going to surely die. And don't you listen to the devil because the devil told Eve, thou shalt not surely die. And yet the preacher will get up and tell you by the word of God, if the rapture happens, you're not going to surely die. That's what the Bible says. I read it to you, Thessalonians. Now men are going to tell you, and the government's going to tell you, if you're going to surely die, it may not happen. Or it may happen. And if you die for the cause of the Bible and the cause of Jesus Christ and the word of God, you get a martyr's crown. Well, that's the study of Shirley Die. Shirley Die. I thought it was interesting. I hope you find it interesting. Give it out to your friends. Tell you, hey, listen, listen to this, listen to this weird guy talk about weird things of dying. It's free for you to get it all out. In the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ.